Good afternoon, friends on the podium, all participants, friends of the conference. CBA 9 is moving on and coming nearing a closer, we are moving on to CBA 10. But climate change remains one of the central issues of our generation of our time and of this century. Unfortunately, climate change is here and now and it is affecting the human system and the communities. It is also affecting the ecosystems, the whole governance process of development, environment and climate change use. It is the greatest challenge human beings are facing and this challenge has been recognized virtually by everyone now, including the President of the United States, who has not been very helpful in the whole negotiation process over the years. However, there are opportunities to be looked into, into the whole climate process, and CBA is such an opportunity of accessing the communities and trying to be with them, learn from them, assist technologically with methodology, with various issues and tools, and trying to put forward the view of the most vulnerable across the world to the power be it. All communities are being affected right now, but the varying degree and in degree of severity. Particularly the most vulnerable communities include a small island states and islands of other states. Coastal community, pastoralists, migratory people, ice and glacier based populations, and countless dependent on ecosystems, forest, agriculture, and other livelihoods. Climate change has come here to the whole planetary population, but has to be confronted with seriousness, with science, and whole climate process is science-based policy research leading to action where what we are doing is integral part of that process. On the, one of the two major ways of addressing climate change is mitigation and adaptation. We have been more engaged in adaptation. But if we do not mitigate rapidly, we will reach the limits to adaptation pretty fast. Then we move into loss and damage further into territories where we have not yet imagined how drastic that would be. So mitigation is a must and this morning I said mitigation is the best form of adaptation. It has to be done rapidly by the country and by the population who are emitting most and should be done rapidly. The molecules do not distinguish what it has come from not just that cost but it has to be reduced. Two degree centigrade is the objective, and for many studies, it shows that we have probably crossed that limit of trying to contain with two degree centigrade. So, the mitigation failures have led to much greater need for adaptation already. Hence, community-based adaptation becomes so central into the whole debate and discussion. The whole issue of IPCC was to address this question and about 10, 11 years ago, there was a big conference of IPCC in Fortaleza. And the question was, what is dangerous anthropogenic intervention? About 700 scientists worked for four days in this conference, came to the conclusion that scientists cannot answer that question. It is a political process 
and the politicians passed. And the politicians in Copenhagen agreed that two degrees centigrade was the limit. Those political systems are failing to contain it within that limit. Hence, adaptation will race like a very rapidly galloping horse beyond our conceptualization in Vietnam. One of the understanding of science is, as I see and other modeling is they use as a tool and say to what is the mean temperature, two degrees centigrade per se. Mean behavior shift in precipitation. But it is not the mean, it is the extremes that's going to hit the population most. It is not what is the level of water that around the year, it is the seven day where the water is one meter high or two meter higher. That is going to make the difference between life and death. That is the make it going to make the difference between population moving or not moving. One of the greatest threats that we have, an unimaginable threat at this point in time, is what IPCC predicts about 300 million people will be displaced by the end of the century. Right now, we see few displaced people between in the Mediterranean Sea, we see some in the Middle East claiming themselves to be states. We are entering a territory where we do not have the laws, we do not know how to make it. You ain't see anything yet. Migration hasn't really started. And we have studied migration for a long time. And one of the basic principle learning is that people do not want to move. They don't want to leave their home easily. So they are forced to move. And once that happens, the whole stability, whole intergovernmental process is based on governments of nation states. Those nation states are being challenged and will be challenged already. The whole climate change issue has to be taken with far more rigor and vigor than our governments have done so, so far. So, as we call here, adaptation must. There must be resources for adaptation and that has to be done rather fast. We, the CBA community, will continue our journey. We have started a bit early in the 2004 and 2005. We had the first World Conference on Community with Adaptation, CBA 1. Since then, we have moved to various countries. Tanzania, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Nepal, Kenya, we are going back to Bangladesh again. So, on behalf of the organizers, the co-organizers, IIT, BCS, and for this occasion, our co-organizer react. On all of their behalf, I welcome you to Bangladesh sometime in April. I'm not giving date yet. In Dhaka, in Bangladesh, and we will let you know as time passes. On the theme issue, we have been talking about urban. But urban is not what the urban engineers or architects define urban as. We, the community, engage people for us. In Asia, Africa, there are very few totally exclusive urban people. What we call is rural urban continuum. People live in urban areas, send most of their money to their rural areas. They have a holiday for seven days, they all go away, or many of them go away. So it's a continuous process. So our definition of urban is based on rural urban continuum, peri-urban, the resources where it comes from, how do you feed the urban population in a climate change world that we have done a study of nine countries where we have tried to understand that sort of process. So it's a much larger issue. So those of you who are here think that, oh, I don't do urban work. It is not that. There are connections and there are immediate connections, there are remote connections with urban issues. So all will be open, we'll keep it very open, it will be a learning exercise similar to this and we'll learn from here. There has been significant difference between what we learned in Vietnam 
to the modality how we organize the conference here, where there have been far higher interaction, much more integrative uh, system, more space, more uh, opportunity, and we will try and improve on it, hopefully, if we get your input, as Salim has requested, to send quickly. So, we will be on a learning mode ourselves from you, and we will take that messages, those messages forward. It also only leaves me to say that thanks to ACTS for all the fantastic backup support and to the Kenyan government for all the support that you have given, Salim, for virtually holding uh, the additive to the conference and doing all the hard work and colleagues of IIED and this year who have been putting all the work behind the scene where I and Salim can then be on the, uh, much more on the front. So it has been a, on the journey, the journey goes on, it is a milestone, we again move on and we move towards Dhaka from here. Welcome to all of you, hope to see you in Dhaka in April 2016. Thank you very much for giving me.